This chapter is over randomness. And when we think about what it means to be random, it means that an event can't be predicted beforehand. Like a game where just winning is random. And we might or might not like that, but when we have a coin, the same thing applies. If we take a coin and it's a fair coin and we flip it, well, we don't know what's going to happen after we flip it. Even if it was a trick coin that comes up 90% of the time tails, it would still be unpredictable with that distribution. We would know 10% of the time it does this and 90% of the time it does that, and it would still be kind of random. For us though, most coins are fair and we would not be able to predict it. So yes, you cannot predict the outcome beforehand. And that's what we mean by random right here. Going on to the next problem, you can see where the instructions are for this, or you can watch this video. What we have here is a cereal box that we are buying, and in this cereal box is a toy. Now there will either be a lion, tiger, or bear in the box. With that in mind, we want to get a full set. We want one lion, one tiger, and one bear. Oh my. So thinking about this, we can go to a simulation website, like random.org, and enter in the numbers 1 through 10. Now why would we do this? Well, looking back at our problem right here, we can see that there's a 20% chance of tiger, 30% chance of bear, and the rest would be lion, meaning 50%. So thinking about this, let's go here and start a little notepad. We can put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Let's go ahead and type in right here for 1. This would be a tiger. Next, we would have a tiger also. Going down further, we're going to have bears here. We'll copy-paste this right here so we can do this a little more quickly. You'll need to make the same sort of list for yours, where we have 30% bear, I just did the bears, 20% tiger, 50% lion, and this is relative to the percentages you see on the screen right now for this problem. So this is kind of my key for using the random number generator. I go to the random number generator and I pick out five cereal boxes. So let's go back to the random number generator and generate five cereal boxes. Here we go. 9, 4, 7, 7, 6. 9, 4, 7, 7, 6. Go back to our notepad and enter in 9, 4, 7, 7, 6. With this in mind, I needed a 1 or 2. If you notice, there is no tiger in this distribution. I got a lion, which is the 9. I got a bear, which is the 4. Two lions in a row, and then I got another lion, which is another 6. I did not get the required amount. So let's go ahead and do 20 simulations. Now this is going to take a moment. I'll have to go through and do all these and then check if I got it. This would be a no, I did not get a full set. So right now I have never gotten a full set. So I would say 0% of the time I'd get a full set. But through the magic of editing, well looking at this right here, magically I have everything. I've actually just run the numbers and done it all. Now since I have 10 in here, I wanted to distinguish it. You could have used zero actually. Um, this works too, but everything looks nice and fine. So looking at this right here, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times I got a full set. And if you look at just one of these, eight, four, three, three, five, um, or eight, four, three, five, five. What did I miss right here? I didn't get a tiger in that set. If you look down at this one right here, I also didn't get a tiger. Going down to this one right here, no tiger. Those tigers are hard to come by. And once again in this set, I didn't get a tiger. So you'll notice this throughout. Um, there might be one that's hard to get. Sometimes there's a very small probability for one. But I have 7 out of 20 where I got a full set. That's 35%. Let's go over to the question. And this time it's a little bit tough. Now this definitely narrows it down to 2 for me. If you're between answers, you might have to do more simulations. If you do 10, you might not get the right answer. So with this in mind, the answers for my question via the simulation will be either A or D. Go here. And the answer was D. So with that in mind, sometimes it's really hard to narrow it down. You'll be between two percentages. 
but the more simulation you do, the more accurate it will get. Going on to the next problem. Now for this problem right here, there's a lot you'll have to do. We're going to have to copy down these numbers and then remove the numbers that are not 1 through 6. So this is what you'll have to do. It's just another notepad opened up. And go ahead and start copying down the numbers without copying down numbers that are outside of 1 through 6. As you see, for the start of this, I've copied 3, 3, 5. So I have not copied 7, 8, 9, or 0. Those are the numbers you will skip. And through the magic of editing, well, here you go. Here is all of our numbers. And now we need to reach 10 in this game we play. We can't go over. So when you make your first two rolls here, you get 3, 3, which is 6, 5, which is going to go over, and then we have reached 10. That is the first set right there. If you notice, 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 5 is 11, and here we can't go over, so we're back at 6, and then we get to 10 by getting 4. Once again, let me repeat how this works. We are going to add up till we get to 10 without going over. 3 plus 3 is 6, 5 is too much, gets us to 11, so we're still at 6, and 4 gives us 10. The next one's a lot easier, because we just have 4, 1, 5, which is 10. Now, if you notice this right here, 5 and 4 gives us 9, which the only way to get to 10, then, is to have the 1. Now, 6, 6 is too much, 5 is too much, 3, now we're stuck needing a 1 again, because we're at 9. If you notice, watch how this goes, 6 plus 6, too much, plus 5, too much, 3, that's 9, and then we need the 1. The 4 and the 6, good, nice and easy, and then again, we have a 4 and a 6. Next, we have a 3, 6, 1. We have 2, 2, 3, 5. And then we have right here. And now we would need, let's see here, this is 5. Everything goes over. 7. And I believe this is it right here. So let's check this out. 5, 11, too much, 11, too much. 7. And then we go to 8, too much, too much, and 10. So we should have 10 pairs right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And these, this 2, 6 right here was, was just too much. It was numbers we didn't need. So all of these add up to 10 without going over now. So let's count up how many are in each row right here. We have 4. We have 3. We have 7. Be very careful. It's very easy to make a mistake. We have 9. 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I believe this is also 9. Let's double check and make sure these are 9s. We have right here 5 numbers, and then we have 4 over there, so that's 9. So let's go ahead and start adding this up, and this is where people can mis make mistakes. I'm going to try to do it in my head here. If I make a mistake, uh-oh. Well, the first four numbers are going to add up to... 21, let's see here, nope, 23, 23, 25, 27, 30, 39, and we have 48. I am adding up these numbers over here, these numbers right over here, the 9, the 5, because I'm counting how many times they're observed, and I have 48 numbers total are in this, because these are just my counts of how many are in each row. So since there's 48, we divide that by 10 and we're expecting 4.8 turns because this was a simulation to see on average how many rolls of the die it would take. And let's see, this is a very exact problem, so cross your fingers and we got it. Any little mistake on this problem will mess you up. I've seen people attempt this problem two or three times, they try to do it quickly. Especially when you get to the quiz, make sure you take your time. It is a very exact problem. If I had put in 4.7 or 4.9, it would have said no. So be careful on this problem. Get it done correctly and get it done once. Good luck.